It was a bit of a tumultuous adventure to get here, but NC State has now landed their 2026 quarterback. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Sports have stopped sporting the way we want them to over the summer, but that's where FanDuel steps in. FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Just visit FanDuel.com in order to get started. Happy Tuesday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, the NC State Wolfpack landed their 2026 quarterback officially on Tuesday. Three-star quarterback Jacob Smith out of Pofftown, North Carolina. Now, some of you may think, why does that name sound familiar? It is because Jacob Smith has already been committed to Elliott Avent and NC State baseball for a couple months. However, after his commitment to NC State Baseball, being that he is a dual sport athlete, he had an increased interest in joining the Wolfpack also on the gridiron. I understand he was recently at the Alpha Wolf Showcase event. I believe that was now two weekends ago. His attendance at that event ultimately made his mind up for him, and he's going to be running with the pack. Yeah, and Jacob Smith is a guy that, you know, a lot of people hear baseball, hear dual sport athlete, and they start to get a little bit of chills. They start to get a little bit of shudders thinking about, wait a minute. We've it's seen me. this play out before. We, it's me. We, I'm people. We've we've seen this not work out well in the past, but I need you all to realize this is a very different circumstance for a ton of different reasons. Number one, we're looking at the obvious in that there isn't quite the same dynamic in terms of he's already been our starter for quite some time, and now it's like this weird thing of, oh, does he want to play baseball? Does he not? What's the coach going to allow him to do? Whatever the case may be there. And even further beyond that, the biggest reality is he's still so young. How many guys have we seen come into college as two sport athletes leave out as one definitively? Like, hey, I can make a lot more money doing this. In this sport, I'm an all right quarterback. But in this one, I've got one of the best sliders they've ever seen. This is my sport or vice versa, right? How many times have we seen that? It's happened plenty. So it let's relax. Let's Calm the anxiety down. You don't need Xanax. You don't need Lexapro. You're okay. I know that this is reminiscent of some not so great things from NC State's past, but this can also be reminiscent of some very good things because if you all do remember, Thayer, Thayer Thomas was not originally a football player for NC State. He was on that diamond and transitioned his way over. So, you know, Jacob Smith is a very special talent that can get it done on both the gridiron and the diamond. That's no problem. Don't don't make a problem where there isn't one. This is a fantastic young man and a fantastic back baseball and football player by all accounts. Way back to the days of Russell Wilson and Tom O'Brien at the helm of the football program, this ain't that. And I certainly don't think any of that saga would have anything to do with how Jacob Smith's story will go at NC State. But nonetheless, he's a really good athlete. Him being committed to NC State baseball, primarily as a middle infielder, but can also pitch a good bit. You talked about him being young. This is someone that still has two full years of high school to continue developing. And to your point, maybe at the end of his high school career, he will lean more to one sport or the other. But if he does, in fact, decide to carry through and play two sports at the collegiate level, let him. If he is that good of an athlete, I think it's very good for not only Jacob himself, but both the baseball and the football program. For quite some time, we were tracking Faison Brandon, who's the number one 2026 quarterback in the country. As expected, he did choose Tennessee, but now NC State has chosen Jacob Smith. Jacob Smith is our 2026 quarterback. Perhaps he could feel like a little bit of a gem in the making, but as a baseball guy myself, I often find that a lot of really good middle infielders, primarily shortstops, can cross over and play a really solid quarterback. Johnny Manziel was actually a pretty decent baseball player and wanted to become a professional baseball player before football ultimately took over his life, as it probably should have, once he got to Texas A&M. Russell Wilson, another one of those prime examples. I don't know how seriously Patrick Mahomes played baseball. Obviously, his old man did. 
His father played in the major leagues. That's more than likely where Pat's uh, arm strength has come from. But you've seen a lot of athletes over the years that have excelled at both baseball and football. And I think Jacob Smith has a really good opportunity to do the very same at NC State. When you're looking forward and projecting these next couple of years out for NC State at the quarterback position, you now have C.J. Bailey, who's picking up a lot of rave reviews, some of which we'll discuss here at the end of this show. You have Will Wilson in 2025. I've said it time and time again on this program. I think the world of Will Wilson. I think Will Wilson is the future of NC State football. And then you have Jacob Smith coming behind Wilson, your 2026 quarterback, dual sport, very twitchy, very smart player, both on the diamond and on the gridiron. I think Jacob Smith is a really good pickup for NC State, and I can't wait to watch him continue and develop. Yeah, I think that this is like we talked about before. It's about that continuity. It's about that, hey, we're stacking good recruiting classes on top of each other. We're stacking really good quarterbacks on top of each other because the reality is, yes, we know we won't be able to keep all these guys. That's just not how this thing works out. These these are a bunch of really good guys. And objectively speaking, it's rare to see quarterbacks be willing to sit three, four years uh, before they're you know doing their thing out there. With that being said, you can never have too many good players. You can never have too many guys that you feel comfortable throwing out in real-time game situations that you know can perform at the highest level. And also, the reality is, as much as we love for all these guys to pan out and they'd be great here, some of them won't. And even if they all do pan out, there's going to be an odd seat during the the old game of the proverbial um, musical chairs. So, The reality is I'm enjoying every time they pick up a new quarterback. I don't care who's there already. Go for it. Get another one. Get a guy that you know can get it done because at the end of the day, you would rather have the problem of having too many than too few. Regardless on how NC State will choose to look at the quarterback position using the transfer portal as well in these next couple years, you have an extremely solid base of high school quarterbacks lined up all the way out through 2026. Something I've already seen on social media already start to be floating around about 2027. There's a very particular quarterback with the last name of Rivers that will be in the 2027 class of quarterbacks. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but that's something to chew on as well. CJ Bailey, Will Wilson, Jacob Smith, and then potentially, if all the cards fall into place, Gunner Rivers in 2027. What a time that would be if NC State could pull that off. Let me tell you something, okay? Picking up Gunner Rivers would be not chasing waterfalls, sticking to the rivers and lakes that NC State is used to. Go ahead, take that one all off. But in all seriousness, I mean, I'll tell you what, that is, you know, we talk about NC State bloodlines and how guys, um, brothers and children and all that have panned out here. And, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be upset at that. I'll take that deal. I, I'm, you know, unless there's somebody better that you know is definitively head and shoulders above them, I'll take it. Coming up next, we're going to continue our discussion from yesterday on Jordan Young. And then later on, we're going to get into some very surprising tweets about some of our skill players blossoming at NC State. This comes after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is FanDuel. Look, we all love sports. In fact, we love them so much, we can't wait for this fall to roll back around. But until then, FanDuel is doing us a massive solid. This summer, FanDuel's helping us keep the sports going whenever we want. FanDuel's hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, enjoy the Locked On College Football Podcast. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron with discussion on the upcoming season and ever-changing landscape of college athletics. This includes conference realignment, the transfer portal, NIL, new college football expanded playoffs, and so much more. Locked On College Football is available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Middle portion of our Tuesday show, wanted to try and continue some of our discussion on Jordan Young from Monday's episode. Our Wi-Fi was all out of whack. We kept disconnecting and reconnecting. Could not stay connected for long enough to continue that discussion, but we will hear on Tuesday. Like Jacob Smith, Jordan Young was also in attendance for the Alpha Wolf 
And we talked a lot about how that event in particular, the very last recruiting event of the summer for NC State, it has a lot of sway. Bring as many of their current commits as they possibly can. Of course, you're always going to have the current team, the current coaches. It's kind of like a last sales pitch of the summer to some of your bigger name talent guys. It's my understanding that Jordan Young was really blown away by this event, and that's led NC State to kind of feel like they're back in the lead for his services once he commits here. Kenton, how do you feel NC State truly stacks up against Clemson for Jordan Young? I mean, at the end of the day, Clemson has been pretty well, not only in, in terms of the winning tradition and all that as of late, but in DBs being put in the league and all that. However, the the veil is beginning to crack. The armor is beginning to show some chinks. And what do I mean by that, right? You look at Andrew Makuba going down to Texas instead of staying and finishing his career there. You look at some of the things in, in terms of, you know, not necessarily or having guys come in highly touted to start off the season that didn't finish that way. And don't get me wrong. This is not disrespecting Clemson because, again, they did have a first-round DB last year. Being a safety with that much scheme versatility, especially in the 3-3-5, that means you can play all over the place. There's going to be some packages where you're at the nickel. There's going to be some time where you're going to be that midfielder. There's going to be some time where you get a deep half. The fact is, Jordan Young can do all that at a high level. There's not a single thing in there that I, I would feel like, damn, why are they asking him to do that? He's going to struggle with that assignment. It's going to be a long day at the office for him because he's being asked to do these things that you would ask of any other safety. So with that in mind, I think that Jordan Young frees you up in terms of he's so good, he can help you navigate, okay, we may have a deficit here or a deficit there. We'll go ahead and throw him in there and see how things work out and where we can make up for some shortcomings. Because again, if you have a guy like him with this much uh, positional versatility, rather not scheme versatility, but positional versatility and different things that he can do when on the field. Again, it helps you cover up those deficiencies because if there is, if your nickel room is banged up, hey, Jordan, we need you to go down there and play some nickel for us. Okay. Our safeties are fine. Nickels are banged up. We'd love to see you uh, get down there. He's, he's a special talent in that way that he could play multiple different positions and do them all well. And last thing on Jordan Young, being that Clemson was in contention for him for quite some time until NC State kind of really feel like they took the lead after this Alpha Wolf Showcase weekend. So important to go up against Clemson in one of these closely contested battles and truly feel like you have the upper hand. Oddly enough, NC State really hasn't found themselves in a lot of closely contested battles for higher name recruits. Of course, we, we know about Will Shipley from a couple years ago. Really felt like we missed out on him. But Jordan Young is a really good opportunity for NC State to kind of get some get back. To compete against Clemson, not just because of ACC ramifications, but also regionally. If you can find ways to pick out of Clemson's pocket, then you're really starting to cook with grease here. So if NC State can, in fact, stay ahead of Clemson and earn that commitment from Jordan Young, I believe his commitment date is October the 12th. I also understand that Jordan Young is going to be visiting NC State, I think, a couple different times here in the fall to see some games. Continue to impress him, win that commitment, and then continue to build out that back half of the defense for Tony Gibson to take over. I couldn't have put it better. To close out our Tuesday show, these last couple minutes, I want to discuss a tweet. It is a tweet that is highlighting our new skill players here at NC State and also highlighting perhaps the quarterback that will be throwing to them in 2025 and beyond. This comes after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, that's the formula for winning championships. But it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, and LED headlights, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. That's because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Last couple minutes of our Tuesday show. I referenced a tweet. It's now time to talk about a very specific tweet. This is a tweet that we saw on Monday. Wanted to discuss it yesterday, but we're not able to using the Wi-Fi. But today, the time has come. 
This tweet comes from Clint Brewster of 247 Sports, and this is what it reads. A text from a friend that was at the NC State practice. Quote, CJ Bailey is going to be an absolute star in the future. And they have the most underrated skill group in the country with Noah Rogers, Concepcion, Justin Jolie, and Water Smothers at running back. These last couple of weeks, we talked about how NC State, they're going to continue to pick up a lot of national momentum heading into this season. And for these national reporters, like Clint Brewster, who is a national analyst for 247 Sports, he's already starting to hear the goods that NC State has under the hood with us this year. We talked at great lengths about what we have at the wide receiving position this year. We have maybe the deepest running back room that we've had in quite some time. But I think the most interesting part of this entire tweet and this text that Clint Brewster received is C.J. Bailey is going to be an absolute star in the future. Earlier this offseason, we talked about how it was maybe a little bit concerning that NC State did not go after another quarterback in the portal to effectively back up Grayson McCall. But as we saw C.J. Bailey in that spring game, he kind of lit it up. Much to the surprise of a lot of people, he looked more than ready to be potentially a backup already. We certainly hope that he won't be needed, except perhaps maybe in garbage time. To have this kind of confidence behind C.J. Bailey so quickly as a freshman, he must be a realer deal than many of us continue to realize. And Kenton, you, you've been very high on C.J. Bailey. Reading this text, what does this mean to you? Buying C.J. stock early has me living good. The market may have plummeted this week. C.J. Bailey stock is always giving you positive returns, baby. <laughs> the reality is very simple here. I knew it from watching his film. I said he's got it, but even beyond it, I can quantify what he does well. He can fling that ball a country mile. His timing and anticipation are something special, and I'm going to tell you right now, I've talked about this a lot. When you think about this receiving court, the scariest part for not only the rest of the ACC but the rest of the country, this group is coming back by and large. Waters is the only name on this list that is guaranteed to not be back next year. Think about that for a second. This is a special group with a special young man throwing to him. I can't wait for it. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going with my next point. You look at Noah Rogers, you look at Casey Concepcion, you look at Justin Jolie, then you get into like Wesley Grimes, you get into Jonathan Paylor, Terrell Anderson, Keenan Jackson, the majority of the, all of those names are all underclassmen. And being that you kind of have to reaccount for everybody at the end of the year with the new world of the transfer portal. However, to have this much talent with this much eligibility remaining, you can already start to see the building blocks of an extremely bright future. Some of these wide receivers that we've been so high on, you really might not even see them play a whole lot this fall, but that's because we're so deep with so many guys with so much eligibility. And once you age out to 2025 and 2026, when you're looking at C.J. Bailey potentially being the quarterback, he's going to still have so many highly skilled weapons to play with. Potentially, he could have at least one year of KC Concepcion playing with his younger brother in Nunu. And that's in addition to all those other guys I mentioned. So the skill positions at NC State, we currently feel deeper than we have maybe ever, maybe in my entire life, 28 years as an NC State football fan. I truly don't know if we've had a bigger collection of talent all at the same time. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, I've told everybody that C.J. Bailey is special and all that, but seeing the other guys come along, you need a lot of people to do their job right in order for you to cook and do what you need to do. And so what, what I would advise is the understanding of this young man going forward is going to be a very special part of this and it's about the group around him as much as it is him because C.J. Bailey stock is going to go to the moon if they keep surrounding him with pieces like what we got going on right now. Little small messages like this kind of confirms that the coaching staff knew exactly what they were doing and not going to get another backup quarterback. Having all that faith in C.J. Bailey to be the guy behind McCall this year seems like it's already starting to pay off. He played extremely well in the spring game, and if he's showing out this quickly in fall camp as well, we could have a monster on our hands. Again, hopefully we don't have to see him a whole lot this season, maybe maybe in spurts once these games get out of hand. Seeing messages like this, it gives you maybe a little bit more confidence that in the event, and not by any means trying to speak this into existence, if we have to turn it over to C.J. Bailey at any point this season, perhaps he can give us a spark in a place that we really need it. All that confidence being built up from the coaching staff into C.J., it can go a really long way, but nonetheless you got to be excited about what's to come in the future for NC State football. The offense is now booming. 
The defense already has been booming with Tony Gibson, but if you can get both booming on the same level, that again is how you're going to start competing for championships. Yeah, no argument out of me. I mean, again, you know, CJ Bailey is special, period. He's a special young man. I know that lots of people are high on guys coming in before him, after, whatever. He's a special player. I want to see how this thing plays out. That'll do it for us here on Tuesday. As always, thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments down in the comment box. Tell us what you think about NC State picking up their 2026 quarterback in Jacob Smith. Tell us what you think about Jordan Young potentially picking NC State over Clemson here in a couple short months. And tell us what you think about the future of C.J. Bailey and all these extremely talented skill players here at NC State for years to come. Make sure to mash that subscribe button if you have not already, and we will see you all tomorrow on Wednesday. And until then, go Pack. Go Pack.